Hi, I'm Steve Cope. Nice to be here with you all again, even if only virtually. I want to acknowledge my co-authors, Charlie Holderman, the C++ developer who is here with us today, and Nawajish Noman and Tanya lopez Cantu, who authored the Jupyter Notebook we're going to talk about. This presentation is a brief explanation of a new Jupyter Notebook and its corresponding ArcGIS tool we shipped earlier this year. The notebook computes slope, aspect, and seven types of curvature. This single tool approach makes it easy to find many methods, easy to rerun with similar settings, and easy for us to add new metrics in the future. We've provided the notebook because we've introduced some newer ideas and want everyone to see how it works, and provide the opportunity for people to modify and experiment with our settings. Or, to add your own new terrain metrics by just plugging in a formula and reusing the rest of our framework. The tool and notebook are relatively simple with the same set of options, a, a list of terrain metrics or parameter types that can be computed, the surface type that you want, a neighborhood distance, and an optional use of an adaptive neighborhood. The tool and notebook address multiple issues we've wanted to work on in our surface tools for a while, such as minimizing the distortion and user errors around map projections, to provide other surface fitting options for working with high resolution DEMs. Also regarding high resolution DEMs, we provide a user defined neighborhood, which is also useful for spatial scaling. And finally, to provide some additional curvature types with clear, unambiguous names and formulas. The graphics at the bottom are of a small cinder cone near Mount Fuji in Japan, showing profile curvature on the left and tangential curvature on the right. This sample data set is provided with the notebook. Calculating surface metrics involves distances and angles, which are distorted by map projections. In the last decade, ArcGIS and other geospatial softwares have worked to avoid projection distortion by writing geodesic algorithms instead of planar. They're computationally more expensive, but provide more correct answers and minimize confusion and accidental errors by end users. Because we're using geodesic distances, we can't assume points are equally spaced and therefore can't use the typical finite difference approach. However, this allows us to write the geodesic calculations in a modular way, which makes it easier to change window size, surface fit, and terrain metric and still use all the same formulas. It also makes it easier for you to add your own new terrain metrics and reuse this framework. Both the ArcGIS tool and notebook are geodesic. They use a slightly different approach, so there are minor differences in the slope and aspect outputs that we'll talk about at the end. Our original slope and aspect implementations way back fit a plane to a 3x3 window, and our older curvature tool used a biquadratic 3x3. The quadratic surface provides a looser uh, least squares fit to the points, which helps to minimize the effect of DEM artifacts and high frequency noise of modern high resolution DEMs. Many of you have recommended the use of quadratic for a long time, and, and we agree. 30 and 90 meter resolution DEMs worked well for describing terrain features with a 3x3 window, but as finer resolution DEMs have become more common, the standard 3x3 uh, has become problematic. The value is limited for geomorphology or urban planning or other fields of computing slope or aspect with a 3x3 window on a 1 meter resolution DEM. It's common for users to re simply resample their DEM, but this introduces other problems and changes the characteristics of the derived terrain metrics in a way that are unknown to most users. We provide a neighborhood window size option, which allows the user to specify a size of window that is appropriate for the DEM resolution and the landscape features of interest. It can also be used for multi-scale analysis by running multiple times with different window sizes. Here you can see the noise in profile curvature with a 3x3 window on the left uh, on a 6 meter resolution DEM. 
And as the window size increases, the striping artifacts and high frequency noise become less, and the significant curvature features of the landscape become more prominent. A bigger or biggest window is not always best. You may miss small, important landscape features. So we introduced the concept of an adaptive window. Adaptive windows are used in other areas of spatial analysis to capture phenomena of varying spatial extent, such as in the bandwidth in a kernel density estimation. In the graphic on the right, you can see how with a constant cell size, a different size window would be appropriate to describe the creek channel, the foot slope, and the plateau. In this approach, we estimate surface complexity for each cell at progressively smaller window sizes until a threshold is met. The metric used is deviation from mean elevation following the approach of James. Building on the graphic on the previous slide, the adaptive window is on the far right, and you can see it retains details of the key surface features and is quite effective to further minimize noise. We'd like to acknowledge Dave James and team from USDA who was quite helpful in evaluating and implementing their idea into ArcGIS. In addition to slope and aspect, the tool and notebook introduce seven geometric curvatures to ArcGIS. Previously, we supported three curvatures based on directional derivatives uh, based on Zeverbergen and Thorne. The geometric curvatures provide for easier understanding and interpretation, and several prior works point to the application value of many of these. It was fortunate that we were already headed down this path of using geometric curvatures when we reached out to several people in the community last year for feedback on our ideas and learned that uh, Yosef Minar, Ian Evans, and Marian Yencho had a significant curvature publication in review. They and others have pointed out inconsistencies and confusion in naming and formulas related to curvature, confusion that, that we also contributed to and, and wanted to resolve. So after reading this and some correspondence with Yosef, we decided to adapt our names to the naming conventions proposed in their paper, and in the upcoming uh, version of ArcGIS included some additional curvature types they recommended as well. Their paper provides not only naming and formulas, but a system for understanding the relationships between curvatures and how some can be created by combinations of others. For educational purposes for the notebook, we've implemented their so-called basic trio from the derivatives. And here we're looking at profile or normal slope line curvature. We also compute tangential or normal contour line curvature and geodesic torsion curvature, all from the derivatives. From this three basic trio of curvatures, other curvatures can be created using simple math. Using this approach, we included mean curvature, Gaussian curvature, and Cassarati curvature. Additionally, since we have slope in the notebook, we also included projected contour curvature, more commonly known as simply contour curvature, which is fairly commonly used. Any of the remaining group of combination curvatures could also be included in this way. We especially want to acknowledge here uh, Yosef's guidance and review and insight on this, uh, particularly on the curvature portion of this project. He was quite helpful and responsive. There are a few known differences between ArcGIS and the notebook. There's a small difference in the curvatures due to the math libraries. We also have a different approach to handling missing values at the edges of the input data. And as mentioned previously, we had to take a different approach for the geodesic calculation uh, using a point-by-point -point approach, which results in some larger differences for slope and aspect. The notebook's provided as an educational and research tool, and we wanted it to be very easy to understand the logic and formulas so it intentionally lacks any optimizations or tuning. On the other hand, the ArcGIS geoprocessing tool is optimized parallel C++. The compute times are seconds versus minutes when comparing the two, so for applied projects, we recommend using the ArcGIS tool. 
As we add new terrain metrics into the ArcGIS tool or find other issues, we'll also continue to update the corresponding notebook here as well. So let's take a look at the notebook. At the top of the notebook is just an overview of the notebook and the structure of the notebook, uh, followed by the input and output uh, folder and path, um, the set of parameters or options. This is the set of uh, terrain metrics or surface parameter types that can be calculated, their name in the notebook, their variable name, a brief description of them, and their output units and any alternate names that might be used. Also here is the other uh, things you can set, the surface parameter type, the neighborhood distance, and the Boolean to use an adaptive neighborhood or not. Short description of the sample data that we use, and then an explanation of how to run the notebook. So here, mostly we're talking about how to run this notebook in conjunction with ArcGIS, either running in Pro or running alongside a notebook server, or maybe you're doing like I am and you're just you know, running it standalone, but you have the ArcPy libraries on your machine. There are some ArcGIS ArcPy dependencies that we use inside of the notebook for simplicity, um, but there's also explanation here of which things we're using and how you can replace them uh, with something else. So we'll scroll down here. The the, the notebook is really laid out fairly simply. There's six steps to it uh, explained here in text and then at the end of the notebook uh, in code, and we'll just go to that in a minute. But first we read the input surface data, identify the neighboring cells that we want to read for input, um, do the geodesic calculations and build a matrix, fit a surface to the neighboring cells, compute the derivatives that we need for the surface, and then compute the specified surface parameter or terrain metric of interest. So here's the three uh, basic trio of curvature types with uh, their full formulas that we implement, and then the combinatorial curvatures that we also talked about. Then we have a set of functions that we use inside of the calculation. So these are sort of the, the, the worker bits, the modular piece of the code that make it easy for the later code we'll show here in a minute to be so simple. So this is all of the sort of guts of, of where things are, are happening. Um, for example, where we're deriving uh, the curvature types, this being the basic trio and and here being the uh, combinatorials, doing the quadratic and biquadratic surfaces, calculating surface normals, doing the geodesics, handling of no data, all that to get down to an easier explanation of what we do on a step-by-step -step basis for each cell as we work through the data. So these are the same uh, six steps outlined above, but here shown in code instead of in, in text. So um, after each of these six steps, we create an output. There's some uh, pre-built rendering here for a curvature type. There's other types of rendering that we'll add here in the future as well. Some explanation of the differences that we talked about previously between the notebook and the ArcGIS Surface Parameters tool. A note about how to add your own new custom surface types and then uh, the key references. In this case, which was uh, Minar's paper for the curvatures and then referencing the paper that this notebook uh, for this conference was part of. Thanks for your interest in our project. Uh, here's the URLs and feel free to reach out to us if you have any feedback or questions on this. Thank you.